Linear is kind of a bad word sometimes in gaming, but I disagree. Sometimes it can be negative, but sometimes linear games give you a lot of interesting possibilities. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 linear games that give you the most freedom. Starting off with number 10, it's Hitman's World of Assassination Trilogy. Now, what makes Hitman so interesting is, as a series, no matter what the mission, your objective is always the same, take out the target. But how you go about it, that's what's entirely up to you. The levels may be small by open world standards, but each one is a dense sandbox brimming with opportunity. Got it! Please don't! The recent games give you these mission stories that play out pretty linearly if you want, but there's so many other ways to complete a mission and all of them are valid. As long as you're able to kill the target and get away, anything really goes. You may not get a high score, but whatever. So go in hot and just gun everyone down, or do the opposite, be totally stealthy and invisible, in and out without anyone aware you were even there. You can snipe your target, blow them up, bonk them on the head, trick them with some kind of karmic death, there's usually a dozen different ways to kill your mark, and those are just the ways the game actually sets up. That's also just if you're focusing on your target specifically too. What's great about these games, these maps are so big and have so much going on, you can just screw around and see what happens. That's practically half the fun, in fact. The Hitman games are all about creating chaotic sandboxes full of possibility in a way that's really only possible if you have a level-driven game. Like, if you tried to scale the density of a Hitman sandbox level up to an open world, I mean, you, you could, but man, it would take a lot of labor and would cost an obscene amount of money. It would be very hard to make that a profitable game. And number nine is Crisis. The original Far Cry is seen as one of the major precursors in the field of open world shooters. And while that series went on to become open world games, Crisis remained a little more tethered to its linear based level format, just with the freedom dialed up to 11. Sure, this is probably most famous for the will it run crisis meme talking about bringing computers to their knees but it wasn't just revolutionary in the amount of polygons it was pushing it also had a really impressive level of freedom that not even its own sequels could match a and not every level is open but the levels are massive with multiple objectives that you can tackle in basically any order any way you like in most games like this you have multiple options for doing things but there's usually one optimal route. In Crisis, you're so overpowered, really anything is possible, though. That's what really makes this game stand out, too. You're a nano suit equipped super soldier who can utilize different modes and you can swap between them on the fly, which gives you super speed, strength, armor, and invisibility. You can also modify weapons on the fly to match your playstyle, so you're really given the freedom to play the game however you want. Play slow and stealthy, go crazy with a shotgun, run everyone down with a car, chuck guys around, blow up buildings, you're empowered to do just about anything. Not every level in the game gives you that kind of freedom, but when it does, it's still one of the most fun FPS games out there. And number eight is Dishonored 2. The Dishonored games take the immersive sim elements of old games like Thief, but push them further. While previous games gave you a ton of options for how to complete objectives, they were still fairly restrictive regarding what you can and can't do, and Dishonored kind of breaks that. You can kill or spare your targets, kill or spare random guards, go stealthy, just run wild with supernatural powers, you can do whatever the hell you want. Yes, cut everyone down. That's fine, it's all possible. They build these incredibly intricate levels that can take hours to sneak through, but if you want, you can just kill everyone in minutes and be done with it. The game's so dedicated to player choice, you can even reject the outsider's power at the start, and you can play the whole game powerless if you want. Which does make things a lot harder, but it's possible. The actual tools you get to work with are fairly limited compared to something like Hitman, but the depth of each level is comparable, and the amount of time you can spend just exploring these spaces is huge, even when the total surface area is pretty small. All the Dishonored games have a fixed linear progression, but the reactiveness of the stories and open environments makes them feel a lot more open than they actually are. 
And number seven is Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. The Yakuza games may be the closest thing to an actual open world game on this list, but it's still kind of a gray area. Sure, there's fairly large maps you can wander around, explore and do side quests in, but compared to any open world game, they're tiny. They're a lot more limited than what you'd expect, and the stories are completely linear. There is no deviating from the intended path, uh, and how you play through these missions does not change. But when you're out in the city, uh, the amount of freedom these games give you is kind of overwhelming. Check this out. There's just so many things you can interact with, from mini games, to arcade games, and gambling, and bar games. What makes this stuff especially noteworthy is that none of it is required, it's just all in game. And it's meant to basically just be amusing distractions between the melodramatic story beats. Like, sure, there are in game achievements and stuff like that for finishing them. I mean, so they're optional to everyone but the most hardcore fanatics. Either way, these games give you a crazy amount of freedom to just wander around and do stuff, and Infinite Wealth is probably the craziest of all of them. At number six is Mario Odyssey. Both the Mario and Zelda franchises embraced freedom this past generation, and while Zelda went full-ass open world, Mario stuck to its classic linear format, but turned each of its levels into their own mini open world sandbox full of possibilities. The two things that contribute the feeling of freedom in Odyssey are your movement powers, which are incredibly varied and allow for multiple ways to get around and solve puzzles, and the whole capture mechanic where you can possess almost anything in the world. Sometimes this is for puzzle solving or combat, sometimes it's just for fun. Uh, there's so much in Mario Odyssey that can just be ignored or missed, and the game just empowers you to find as much as you can rather than collect them all. So there's a unique incentive to just focus on doing the things you want to do rather than try to be a completionist. The main collectibles are power moons, and these things are everywhere, and you only need a fraction of them to complete the game, so you're free to get as many or as few as you want, and in almost any way that you want. At number five is The Stanley Parable, a completely different game from everything else on this list. Most of the games here don't just offer narrative freedom, but mechanical freedom as well. But in The Stanley Parable, you can jump, sort of. You can also walk and you can press buttons. That's it. There's no other things you can do. At first, the game seems really overbearing, offering almost no freedom whatsoever to the player and an ever-present narrator that constantly tells you what to do and where to go. As you may know, The Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. But that's also kind of the magic of the game. The freedom comes from finding the many little ways to escape the narrative or subvert it, which usually results in some ridiculous alternative ending. You'll probably start with the more obvious alternate paths, like taking the right door instead of the left, the starting junction, but as you explore more, more opportunities to subvert the game reveal themselves. It's a game that makes you want to check out every single nook and cranny, run against every piece of geometry to see if there's some secret waiting on the other end. It's the way the game reacts to your choices, even the ones that seem like a glitch or bug that make it feel so free. There's plenty of games that you can just do whatever in, but they don't actually feel free because there's no mechanical or narrative benefit or reaction to your actions. But the way this game constantly rewards players' cleverness just feels really freeing in a unique way. Is this a bucket? Correct. It is a hologram of a bucket, not an actual bucket. At number four is Armored Core 6. This game does have a branching story that offers some level of non-linearity, but I mean, it's Armored Core 6. This is a game where you have levels, you select them from menus, and you do them, and then you have more menus that you select things from. I mean, it's literally just like straightforward level-based game. But the real sense of freedom to me 
comes in the mech builder. You're given so many different parts, weapons, cores, and abilities that dramatically alter your playstyle. Um, it's like creating a build in a Souls game, but on steroids, there's so many different ways to build a mech. And while they're not all viable, they're usually at least pretty interesting. Armored Core 6 can be a really tough game when it wants to as well, but depending on your build, you can struggle for hours or clear a boss first time easy. And it's not like From's other games where you're basically playing the game the same way, depending on your loadout. What you're doing is going to look completely different from loadout to loadout. Out. The build variety is really off the charts here, and because all the weapons have their uses, the possibilities of a gimmick build are practically endless. It's just such a liberating system compared to most games. Even though the actual levels in progression only change slightly, the mech builder, it offers a level of freedom rarely seen in games. And number three is the Steambot Chronicles. This extremely unusual PlayStation 2 game looks like a standard JRPG, but it's so much more. Sure, there's a story to follow, but what makes it so unusual is the level of freedom you're afforded. You can play music, fight in tournaments, get in a relationship that's totally optional, even become good or evil by the end, which is highly unusual in a game like this. There's just so many optional stuff around the world, it's just there because it's interesting or makes the world feel more alive. It's a relentlessly quirky game that just sort of does its own thing and doesn't care if you're following along or not. The main gameplay involves piloting a mech, but it's just one of many different things you do in it. I've seen it described as a non-violent Grand Theft Auto, but it's really more like a weirder, more free version of Shenmue without all the polish. And yes, I do realize that is a an interesting statement to make, but if you've played this game, you know what I mean. It's it's not an open world. It's a, a linear JRPG in terms of progression, but there's so much extra stuff that you're free to interact with at your leisure that this game just really has its own unusual vibe. At number two is Deus Ex, the granddaddy of all immersive sims, and the one that all games in the genre are eventually compared to. And you can't beat the original Deus Ex, even all these years later. It's clunky, it's awkward, uh, especially compared to any modern shooter, but if you're willing to get past the steep learning curve, uh, you'll see why this game is so revered. In terms of freedom, it is still one of the best games out there. It is a linear game with a fixed story that only deviates once in a while, but the mechanical depth and freedom of the gameplay is excellent. And I kind of feel like I'm understating it a bit, even. Everywhere you go, there's multiple ways to enter an area. There's different ways to resolve situations. Depending on how you build your character, the way this game can be played can just be wildly different. Each level is dense with opportunities to explore, sneak, or cause trouble. <laughs> And it's the level design that really makes this game feel as free as it does. As good as the sequels are, no game in the series has been able to match the freedom of the original Deus Ex. It's just in a league of its own when it comes to immersive sims. And finally, at number one, Baldur's Gate 3, which, duh, there's freedom in games, and then there's Baldur's Gate 3. The developers said they were greatly influenced by games like Ultima 7, and wow does it show. In this game, you can be good, you can be evil, you can kill almost any NPC and the game will keep going. You can use boxes in unintuitive ways, you can combine spells to reach areas way before you're supposed to, and you can completely bypass large sections of the story. You can even kill or spare everyone you meet. You can talk to the ghosts, you can find uh, incredibly obscure secrets, you can get your eye stabbed out or sacrifice a companion for power. If it seems like something is possible in this game, it probably is. Like, it's one of the most uh, open games that still manages to be still a pretty linear RPG for the most part. Like, it's such an open game that it's almost a double-edged sword. It's easy to waffle over almost everything you do during your first run through because many things can happen and not all of them are good. In any other game, a moment where a character's kidnapped is scripted and unavoidable, but in this game, it's kind of optional and it can be absolutely devastating to your progress. There are so many possibilities and options available that it can be head spinning. So when something isn't possible, it can be frustrating, but that's only because the game has so much freedom that it feels almost infinite. When it's not, it's kind of disappointing, you know? 
Even if it's an impossible expectation, still what is possible here is incredibly damn impressive. There's so many variables that many people will just never see because the game accounts for just about everything. Even the most unlikely player scenarios, it's the sort of freedom that you almost never see in games. And while it's definitely not perfect and can lead to some awkwardness, the fact they even tried is pretty remarkable. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is a course of subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time. Right right here on Game Ranks.